This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Pat Evans back with me. You are an advocate for Parkinson's and you also are a volunteer with Parkinson's Canada. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Kathy. Let's talk about um, um, April is Parkinson Awareness Month. You are a person with Parkinson's. When were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed now 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Long time ago now. For wow. Some Parkinson's, but I'm doing quite well considering um, the way most people are, uh, do at this stage. So I'm very fortunate. But you, right from the get-go too, I think if I've learned anything from you, you didn't uh, let anything hold you back. If anything, you got more active. Oh, and I, we're going to talk about exercise. I know it's a personal interest of mine too, but my goodness, you're just such an inspiration when it comes to people with Parkinson's to get more involved. You, you do boxing, you're swimming, you're walking, you're doing all sorts of things. You just got home from Hawaii. You, you, you just have not slowed down. If anything, you've sped up. <laughs> well, I do have my days and I do have my days, um, but I do think attitude is, is very important and it is easy to get I mean, 50% of people with Parkinson's actually have a, a biochemical uh, depression that, that is, it's caused by, by you know, levels of, in, in, of chemicals in your brain. So I'm very fortunate that I don't, but it, this is actually addresses a very important point because if attitude is everything, then it's important that you not be depressed, anxious, or ap apathetic, which comes with the disease often. So it's important to get treatment for that so that you then can do the things you need to do to keep moving forward to keep exercising, to keep educating yourself, to uh, to kind of know know that there is life after a diagnosis of Parkinson's and to not think that the person who's seen on television who's not done very well is going to be you. All right, now you say 15 years. 15 years. How, how, how have things changed? How have you seen things evolve? I'm sure, you know, with technology and with medicine and with just, oh, uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> Things have changed a lot. I mean, when I was first diagnosed with Parkinson's, I, the little prescription bottle that I got with levodopa, which what most people take, it's a little yellow oval pill, it said take with food. Well, taking with protein is not a good idea. If you take levodopa with protein, then it, it, it competes for the same um, entries into the body. And so it's really important that you not take it with, with, with some food. But, you know, that the things have changed. I didn't know at the time that that osteoporosis often comes with people with Parkinson's, especially for women who are maybe a little bit more slight, um, have a history of, uh, of it. So yeah, there's lots of changes that people um, don't know much more about it. They know, for example, the loss of smell often accompanies um, uh, Parkinson's disease, which is of course with COVID has made things very interesting. And also um, uh, the, uh, there, there's a lot of things they know now that RAM sleep disorder is connected with Parkinson's. So if you have REM sleep, sleep disorder, which means that acting out of your dreams, vivid dreams, then that could be a biomarker for Parkinson's. So if you have that and you have one other symptom, maybe small handwriting, a little bit of stiffness, it's important to make sure that it's not Parkinson's because the earlier you're diagnosed, the more that you can do to actually address uh, and educate yourself about the disease. So you can do the best you can do. And Parkinson is something that, that doesn't happen in older people. It happens in younger people too. Um, and, and it's like you say, the sooner you get diagnosed, the sooner you can start working with it and, and helping yourself. But the diagnosis is not easy. That's correct. It's very, it sometimes takes a long time and it's unfortunate it shouldn't take a long time. And sometimes doctors actually are reluctant to diagnose with Parkinson's, which is unfortunately the opposite of what really is helpful. If you, if you err on the side of caution and you actually diagnose with Parkinson's and you treat even with levodopa and you see if it works, then if it doesn't work, then you, you maybe have a clue that it may not be Parkinson's. But if it does work, then you can get an edge on actually doing something about it. So I encourage doctors to, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it may be a duck and it's better to presume it's a duck than not. Okay. All right. I think we're just having a little bit of trouble with the internet here. Are you there? You're still there? I'm here. Oh, we'll keep going here. There, we'll keep going here. Uh, I think that the last time I, I talked to you, I, it was a real learning uh, experience for me. We were talking about the, the stigma of Parkinson's where people are diagnosed with it and they don't want to tell anybody, especially like an employer. 
and especially with younger people, um, and especially if it's taken them a long time to get diagnosed, if you're 45 or you're 40 or you're 35 and you've been diagnosed with Parkinson's, um, really, you know, it, it, it's tempting for um, employers, employers are already thinking that you're maybe not doing the job as well as you could be doing. It's often an excuse to, to let someone go. And yes, we've heard of people who have experienced uh, discrimination as a result of, of uh, having Parkinson's. I mean, I, we, when I was diagnosed, I was, um, uh, my husband was working in radio and there was a, a very well-known broadcaster who kept it secret for a long time because he was afraid that people would start to, any mistakes he made would be chalked up to the Parkinson's. So he kept it hidden for quite a long time. And it, it's, it's not good because then people cannot get the support that they need from others, you know, from people in their community. Right, right, right. Now, speaking of support, in September, we have the Parkinson Super Walk. How does that look this year? I know that the pandemic sort of put a hold on what it usually looks like. <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't have a central walk. We had a number of smaller walks. Uh, and so we're excited to get together this year. Um, I'm hopeful that we will be able to. There doesn't seem to be any reason as long as we are careful and we practice, uh, you know, safe protocols. Um, we hope that we'll be able to do it outside and uh, as, as usual because it's a wonderful event from a, from a, uh, a psychological point of view. It getting together and if it's especially if it's a nice day, uh, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a real celebration and a real because that camaraderie is so important with Parkinson's. It's so important for people to know that there are others like them and uh, and to feel the sense of being part of something. And we haven't even had the support groups been able to meet the last couple of months in terms of the support groups. And we're actually meeting this month for the first time and people are really looking forward to it. And um, so it, it's, it's, it will be, have to be very careful. We have, we have to get the, we even are going to be doing temperature checks. We're going to be uh, getting people to sign that they've been vaccinated. We're going to have practice safe distancing, you know, safe social distancing. Um, uh, we'll be eating together, so we'll have to be very careful about that. So we're very aware because people with Parkinson's are at, uh, some, of, some people are at a greater risk because there's already neurological problems that you have. A lot of people have other associated problems as well because your muscles aren't working as well your lungs may not be, be working as well so yeah we have to be very careful but so you, and you're weighing the balance between you know how important is it to get together and that that emotional component and that educational component and and the risk is associated so right. we're very right right now now we talked before we started taping too that uh Hopefully, we're, we're going to be getting like a, I, I think the word we were using was, was a hub for people with Parkinson's to be, uh, get more support. Well, we're, we're, we've been talking at, and, and, and the roundtable discussion that Parkinson Canada went across the country and talked to people with Parkinson's about what's really needed. And we've known this for a while that because Parkinson's is such a complex illness, it can affect so many different parts of your body um, that it's really important that that we have a, a multi-care approach to Parkinson's. So a nurse practitioner uh, working in conjunction with your movement disorder specialist, uh, but a, alongside that, a physiotherapist is very important. Speech and language, your speech can be affected. Um, exercise is, is an integral part of remaining well. So uh, exercise and uh, um, uh, even even a, a, a optometrist or a neurological uh, a pers or a, a ophthalmological perspective, because in my case, my my eyes have been affected. So you wouldn't know that by looking at me, but I have I have um, convergence problems. So my muscles and my eyes aren't working properly together. So it, because it's such a complex disease, like, it's important that we have that hub, uh, that we have that ability. So I was excited that um, in Rideau Community Health Services is, is um, working towards that very thing. Um, and they've had a lot of experience with that because they have a diabetes program that works that way, for example. And so we're hoping, uh, hoping, hoping that eventually that the community will come together, the government will give that kind of support. And, and I know the, the Smith Falls government is, is certainly very supportive of the idea because you get all of the, 
the disciplines and agencies working together to uh, like even caregiving, right? Respite services, you know, um, they're all important. And the reason why multidisciplinary care is important is uh, people do better, which in the long run is gonna save the system money because then they won't fall and break their hips, end up in the hospital um, uh, and, and, the, and their caregivers will stay more healthy as well because there's a great deal of pressure on, on care partners to, uh, as people you know, become more and more um, needy of, of service. And we obviously don't wanna put people into uh, institutional care um, unless, unless it's necessary. So it's, like I said, the, the, the hub idea that Rideau Community Health Services is proposing, I'm hoping is, will, will benefit people in, uh, with Parkinson's and, uh, and the community as well. Well, since I've, I've gotten to know you a few years ago, Pat, I, I don't know what the numbers are like around this area, but you've helped people come out and uh, you've put a face on Parkinson's and, you know, somebody might just be living it alone or just with their family. Now they know because of, of you doing things like this and, and telling people that there are support groups, there are things going on. Hopefully there's going to be more going on too, that uh, there's more people coming out and, and saying, yes, I got Parkinson's. I, I, I want I to talk to somebody. I, I really think that Parkinson's is really grossly underdiagnosed in this area. And it, it could be that some people are being diagnosed and don't want to talk about it. And which, because the, they, they're afraid or they're afraid of, of uh, well, or they might think that there's nothing they can do about it, but there are things, there is support available. And, um, and I think that uh, because we live in a rural area, I think rural areas, there, some doctors may not want to um, uh, send people to a neurologist because they think it's going to take a very long time. So they kind of hope that it, it that they're going to be able to help people to manage whatever they're dealing with. Some people think it's just old age, but it's not. And as you said, there's lots and lots of people who are younger who are not being diagnosed because people don't expect that it's it's heart Parkinson's when you're 35 years of age. Um, so I encourage people to not to, to if they think they have some symptoms and i know it's very complicated but but they're they have any symptoms at all that they talk to their doctors because there is life after parkinson's and you can live well with parkinson's and and the sooner you get diagnosed the better the prognosis is in the long term well, you know, it, it was also an eye opener to me too, you know, the 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 last parkinson super walk before covid the amount of people that came out, the amount of people with Parkinson's, the amount of people, their families, their friends. I, I, I don't, I, I'm a terrible estimator, but there was hundreds and hundreds of people at that walk in Perth that day. I mean, you just had to come out and see how many people are here to offer their support or they know, you know, I'm, I'm going to help somebody. And I think the amount of support, financial support we've had from the community has been incredible, really. And, and I think that is because people know of people and they, uh, I mean, I, I've always, since I moved here nine years ago, um, I have been so impressed by the way the community helps each other. And I think that, that this, the amount of money we've raised is, a, is an indication of that. I mean, this year, uh, you know, we may not raise as much money, but the need we know is there. And, and we, we're trying, I mean, my goal has always been to uh, educate people about Parkinson's because I think that it, that people can do well and, and I don't think some people I mean I talked to a guy this morning and he said well he his partner was diagnosed around 40 and they, the first support group they went to in Ottawa they happened to go in Ottawa had a lot of older people who were not doing well and he got really discouraged and he thought this is the way my life is going to be and then he came and met other people like me and Gail Truman and other people who are you know doing well and and he thought okay that I can have a different outcome, and he has had a different outcome. But then he had to learn how to, he had to learn how important exercise was. He had to learn how important the when to take your medication, how to take your medication, dietary things he could do, um, you know, medic medication timing, all of that stuff. Um, that that will lead to, like I said, will lead to better outcomes. So it it has meant the world of difference to him, and I know many others as well. So this time when we haven't been able to meet either you know with, through support groups and the time and we haven't been able to educate people just put flyers in the in the community you know because you know offices have been closed 
it's been a very hard time. And I think people with Parkinson's have felt very isolated and care partners as well have been under tremendous stress because they were afraid of having people into their homes to help care for. And so it's put a lot of stress on people, on families with Parkinson's. Yes, I, well, I'm, I'm hoping we're, you know, at the tail end of all this and, and things are opening up a little bit too, but a big part of it, like you say, is education and awareness, making people aware that, it, you know, if you need help, it's out there. And that's why I appreciate your talks with your, us here on FYI. Uh, a lot of it is fundraising, but uh, so much of it is making people aware and educating them. So I appreciate your time here with us at, on FYI, Pat. You, you, have, you have really uh, made it possible for so many uh, organizations to be able to talk about what's important to them and, and you recognize the need for, for that kind of communication. So I really appreciate the opportunity you've given me today again. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. We'll have you on here real soon. Uh, we'll talk about the super walk. I know it's like four or five months away, but in terms of a person attending, it's four or five months away. But as somebody who's organizing it, you, the rubber has already hit the road and you're probably <laughs> doing yeah. all sorts of things. The, uh, the website opens at May the 10th. And uh, so just have to Google Superwalk and people can uh, find out what's, you know, what's happening and how to register. And, and uh, I'd be happy to thrill to, to, uh, to hear from them as well. So. Excellent. Excellent. So how do people learn more about Parkinson's uh, before you're back here on FYI again? <laughs> well, if, if they want to know about um, uh, uh, the, super, the support group or any educational thing that's happening, they can call Parkinson Canada. And ask for Krista Duncan, actually. Krista Duncan is the, the person who knows about a lot of support groups in the area. And it's 1-800-565-3000. And again, the name is Krista Duncan. Um, and, and also with the Superwalk, all of May the, starting May the 10th, they can go uh, just Google Superwalk and, and they'll get the information that they need in terms of the, the Lanark Walk and a link to the Lanark Walk. Excellent. Saturday, September the 10th, by the way. Saturday, September the 10th. Excellent, excellent. Oh, well, this has been great. Thank you very much, Pat, for, for joining us here on FYI and, and uh, making people more aware of Parkinson's and uh, educating them. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.